We all know, of course, the history of Barry, uh, the coal that came out of those docks, the way in which within, what, 25 years before 1914, 400 people had become 40,000, and Barry was the biggest coal exporting port in the world. But I don't want to go on about history and heritage. Connection with regeneration is clear, but I don't think it cuts it quite well enough any more than saying the Rhondda once at 50 collieries tells you anything about the future of those coal-bearing valleys. I'd rather give you three words, if I may, for the conference today, and the words are urban, civic, and aspirational. Urban because when the dust from Barry's expansion had ended, what was left was an urban node. Barry was one of the great urban components of modern Wales. It was neither the bucolic and charming Vale, nor the provincial and rather snobbish city. It created an urban community. And civic, because out of that urban community came a sense of place, came a sense of pride, came a sense of aspiration. Parks and open spaces, theatres and cinemas, friendly societies, trade unions, the town hall, the memorial hall, all of those things that people brought together to create something quite incredibly, remarkably new in Wales. Because remember, Barry was a totally dynamic experience. It grew from absolutely nothing into something within a short spell of time. And out of that civic urban place, out of that culture, came a, a culture that went from high to low, from sporting heroes like Bob John, the great Arsenal halfback in the 1920s, who played against Cardiff City, Derek Tapscott on the wing for Arsenal and Cardiff City, uh, a, a plethora of academics, of historians. At one point, both the professors of economic history at Oxford and Cambridge were Barry Grammar School boys, David Jocelyn and Rothka Habakkuk. And, Musicians like Robert Teer and Grace Williams, the sculptor Robert Thomas, painters Evan and Felicity Charlton, Jack Crabtree, Leslie and Sally Moore. You could go on and on and on. We could put blue plaques everywhere. Barry had Gwynver Evans, who, after all, was the greatest leader of Plaid Cymru ever had. It also had in Dorothy Rees, Wales' second woman Labour MP. And it had Sir Raymond Gower, who really was a one-nation Tory. So, urban, civic and aspirational, and it's that that I want to leave you with. The thought that Barry was a professional town, but it was also a working class town, and it was a town in which things knitted together to give people a sense of their place, which in turn allowed them to see themselves as Barrians. Are we in danger of losing that? I don't really think so. Remember, Barry is now the second largest town in Wales, but I do think that sense of how people can come together is something that we need to consider as we put in the final bit to the jigsaw. And that is, of course, Barry Island. Because Barry Island was the extra special gift that this mindscape and this townscape of Barry had. It had the coast. It had the place that attracted as a magnet all of the people of South Wales and further. And, and it's more than that, isn't it? In the 21st century, we can now see a way in which Barry Island is a catalyst to unite the past and the present, the town and the seashore, and maybe the sense of a future which Barry people can adhere to. I don't make any kind of wonderful, nostalgic, sentimental remarks. We, we live in a town of deprivation. We live in a town where people do not always come together as either equals or citizens. We live in a town which is often a series of villages. But if we think urban, if we think civic, and if we think aspirational, then I think we can really blow air, vitality, back into the lungs of Barry once again. And I do think Barry Island, so often the grit uh, in the oyster, could again become the pearl.